so I think everyone has come in. Hi everyone, so we are starting today this um, second session of our visual arts uh, focus entitled um, Online French Encounters uh, Art Basel Hong Kong. So welcome to all of you. It's 9 a.m. in Paris, uh, 3 p.m. in Hong Kong. Um, my name is Adeline Blanchard. I'm responsible for visual arts at Institut Francais. And I'm very glad to welcome today um, Theodora uh, Barat, a French artist. Hello, Theodora. Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Hello. And uh, so you will be in conversation with Angel Leon from Videotage. Hello. Hello. Hi, Angel. And uh, as an introduction, I will ask Aidan Lee, uh, director of uh, K11 Arts Foundation, uh, to give a little introduction. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Aidan. Right, good to see you. So, um, yes, so first of all, so just to remind you, so um, this Visual Arts Focus is organized together uh, with the um, Consulate of France in Hong Kong, together with the Institut Francais on the occasion of Art Basel uh, Hong Kong. Um, today we have invited Théodora, because Theodora is actually the winner of a residency called Micromega. It's a new residency that has been created uh, by the Consulate of France in Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, and together with different uh, partners in Hong Kong and in France, one of the partners is uh, K11 Arts Foundation, also um, uh, Videotage. Um, and also we have uh, partners in France, such as CNAI uh, in Paris and uh, Fondation Anticipation Lafayette, also um, in Paris. So today, uh, Theodora will start. I will just um, give a brief introduction on her uh, biography um, because Theodora, you spent two months uh, in residency in Hong Kong, so in March and April. So congratulations for that because uh, you had to go through a quarantine of 21 days. So yeah, so that's something uh, amazing. So congratulations for that. Um, so you were born in 1985 and uh, you live and work um, in Pantin, in the outskirts of Paris. Um, you studied um, at the School of Art in Nantes uh, before joining Le Frenois, uh, which is a postgraduate uh, in the north of France, the Studio National des Arts Contemporains. Uh, so you're currently doing a research um, and creation PhD uh, within the doctoral uh, program uh, Radian, Radian, or, um, since so and uh, generally, so you work uh, is between uh, cinema, visual arts, uh, you creating sculptures, installations, and films. And uh, after your residency, so you've been showing your installation, your film installation at uh, K11 Musea. So that's two days ago, right? It opened. And that's yeah. why I will um, ask, so first, um, Aidan, yeah. Aidan Lee, so uh, head of uh, K11 Art Foundation in Hong Kong, uh, to do uh, an introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So, so I will make a very short introduction because um, the, the, the collaborations um, opportunity was brought up, um, you know, um, I, I think it's early, early this year. So, so when when the council and and video attached came to us and and they were looking for a venue uh, which can show uh, Fio Doha's work, um, then you know we are very interested because I think that the whole the whole collaboration is very meaningful and and especially you know um, we are all under the COVID you know the situation of um, you know the travel ban and all that and I really want to make this happen because. Um, in these two years, everyone, you know, is just trying to do whatever they can, you know, for, for their institutions. So, so luckily, you know, uh, Fido, Fido, uh, Fido Doha came to Hong Kong, you know, and did, you know, the 21 days um, quarantine. And, and I guess because, because we had a little conversation before and she enjoyed all this research, um, you know, in Hong Kong, doing all this um, island visit um, really early in the morning. So, so I'm grateful, you know, in the end, you know, the, the, the work is beautiful, you know, when we had the opening um, two days ago. 
um, we originally we would like to have like these outdoor projections, but because the um, you know it is still quite bright, but luckily you know we have this um, outdoor screen, you know then you know people can look at the screen in the same time, um, so it was perfect. But at night we have these projections on on like um, on like a glass screen. So it looks amazing. Everyone just enjoying looking at, at, at the video um, um, outdoor. So, so it's really wonderful. Of course, you know, we would love to have these kind of collaborations in the future again. Mm, great. So yeah, thank you so much, Aidan. So we're eager to see so Im some images of the installation that uh, Theodora will share with us. And I will also pass on the word to you, uh, Angel. Leon, so you're a program manager at Videotage, uh, which is one of the most fundamental new media art institutions in the greater China region, uh, with a commitment to serving artists and communities in, in Hong Kong. Yes, um, and we have the honor to collaborate with the consulate of France, uh, consulate general of France in Hong Kong and Macau, and also K11 Art Foundation on this project supported by Institut Foncey. Um, at the very beginning, when we have, when we had the idea of the residency, um, we have decided, we have set the idea to be globalization. The theme would be globalization for Miko Megas, at least for the first edition. So, because Globalization has been a hot topic for, for quite some years now. And surprisingly, it has become more relevant when the pandemic hit us in 2020. So when Theodora submitted her proposal, uh, when we had the open call last October, we were very impressed by the high quality, but also how accurate it is to interpret Hong Kong and the theme of globalization. And that's the reason why the selection committee has invited Theodora to, to this project. And we are, we are very happy working with her because it, it is very difficult. Uh, over the last two years to have a residency and it felt like a miracle when I saw Theodora in person in Hong Kong after her quarantine and and I really appreciate that. Um, so uh, Theodora, so would you mind talking about how how you have developed the idea of, of power when you receive our invitation? Yeah. Uh, hi, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, so you hear me? It's OK. Everyone hear me? OK. wanted to be sure. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, as you mentioned, um, I'm more and more defi defining myself as an artist researcher. Uh, for me, I think creating is somehow leading an investigation. Um, so I'm always like, uh, searching and uh, looking for things. Uh, when I applied, uh, I knew I wanted to work on electricity as an incarnation of um, globalization. Uh, indeed, uh, I think that in Hong Kong, that Hong Kong is one of the few places in the world where you realize how much electricity is the blood of our modern societies. Um, and uh, the, the thing is also I wanted to, to, to work on the interaction between the territory and uh, the infrastructure and how was the relation between uh, Hong Kong Island and the, and the new territories. I found it very interesting. So with all these things like um, uh, the, the, yeah, the electricity, the, the territories and how they, 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 they interact uh, to, to each other. Um, maybe I can continue of, uh, on how I developed the, um, the, the project because uh, I, yeah, I, I, I've been de developing it uh, since the, the, the beginning and before uh, coming in Hong Kong. So the idea was to like uh, um, make some research, um, uh, read some articles, trying to meet and be in contact with researcher, uh, watch a lot of movies uh, made in Hong Kong, like the usual thing I do. And for me, this whole preparation uh, was 
uh, a way to define a framework because I knew that when I would arrive in Hong Kong, all my expectation will be completely smashed <laughs> and I had to experience the actual Hong Kong and readjust my understanding because what I could find in the article or in the movie was not the, the actual uh, experience of, of Hong Kong. Yes, and during Theodora's stay in Hong Kong from mid-February to early April, uh, you have really visited a lot of places and, and we had the we had the chance to visit, to join you in some of them that I can share with you some photo with you right now. Um, for example, uh, can you see the share screen right now? Yes, this is a photo that Theodore because uh, Theodore was so interested in the substation when she I think during the first week of her arrival in Hong Kong so actually when she walked around when she finds some substation building she would take pictures of them um, this is one of the occasion we go take photo of the substation and we also visited this is a power plant not appeared in her artwork but a power plant that she visited that supplied it electricity for with another power plant supplied it, the electricity for like most part of Hong Kong except for Hong Kong Island where like the power plant that support the electricity for Hong Kong Island appear in Theodora work but she like she did researches even for things and places that did not appear in her final work as her, her research process. And we also visited, uh, this is Tea Park, uh, is one of the green energy demonstration sites or like facility in Hong Kong that we have been there. Uh, so Theodora, would you mind telling us like how the research process has shaped your final idea like throughout this two months residency? Yeah, um, so um, as I said, I, I really needed to, to discover uh, the more I could uh, in order to, to understand and as I said, readjust uh, my problematic. So I kind of like needed to see everything. Um, so I, yeah, it was very important for me to, to like have a full scope of the topic I was dealing with. And when I got the sufficient overview, then I could choose the direction I wanted to follow. Um, so after, yeah, <laughs> walking a lot and everything, I decided to, to focus uh, on Hong Kong Island's uh, electric infrastructure and its relation to Lama Island uh, power station. I'm just going to show you some picture uh, from, the, from the substation. So maybe it's a bit abstract so, so you can see and uh, understand what I'm talking about. I'm just going to share. Um, yeah. you do you see? Yes. Yes. So this is a substation. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to show you a few of them. Um, so uh, substation, they're basically, uh, they basically, they receive high voltage electricity from uh, power station, from Lama power station and redistribute it in a lower voltage uh, all over the, the city. And what interests me is the architecture that is very peculiar, like huge, uh, mostly without built, uh, without built, uh, windows, sorry, and cover with styles. And for me, they're like a, kind of a mix between bunkers and monuments. I'm gonna show you a few. You see, this is another one. This is uh, still from the film. Uh, I didn't want to show extract because I think it's you have to see it in the duration, but I just wanted to show you some, some still of it. And so this is another substation, actually my, my favorite one. Um, and um, also uh, Lama Island was uh, very, very, um, interesting for me uh, i was am amazed i show you another tale from the film uh, i was completely amazed by the relation uh, between this huge power station and i called it in the film the electric colossus like uh, 
I, I love it. <laughs> and yeah, the interaction between this colossus and the, the very, very luxuriant vegetation with um, what appear to be a very strong, strong uh, wildlife. And uh, yeah, I, 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 the movement was like trying to see everything I could in new, in new territories in Hong Kong Island and then uh, refocus on uh, exactly what uh, what I think was the most uh, precise and accurate uh, places I, I, I wanted to, to deal with. Yes. Uh, Allow me to fill in some facts about Hong Kong. Um, actually, Hong Kong Island is an island like quite some population live there. And actually, this is our city center. And Lemma Island is one of the outlying islands because we have quite some islands around Hong Kong. And this is one of the islands that uh, the Hong Kong Electric Company have moved their uh, power plant which were on the Hong Kong Island to Lima Island to be away from the residential area. So this is very interesting that Theodora has shown the relationship between like, because in Hong Kong, we hardly have suburbs. All the areas are urban area, but she kind of shown the relationship between like places that produce energy, which is not city center, but the city center that consume the energy, but they cannot produce themselves. And this is a very interesting just to position. Yeah, so, you're absolutely right to, to, to add this. And just to, to add something, sorry, it's um, uh, what interests me a lot was that the fact that I, I read some things about the history of Hong Kong Electric, the supplier of electricity. And what I liked a lot is that the power plant uh, always had to be put uh, further and further from the, the what was going with the growth of the the population. So it was first in North Point and Causeway Bay, then uh, in Aplazao, and finally in Lam Island. It, this is the movement of uh, going backward that I really liked and re found very interesting. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> yes, and it is interesting that because I observed the development of the project of Theodora's project, that uh, electricity infrastructure has been a consistent theme in some of her previous project. But in this time for off power, she has applied a science fiction setup to imagine a fictional blackout on the Hong Kong Island, which is very unlikely to happen in Hong Kong. Like I've gone up here and I've never seen that. And it is a very interesting interpretation of Hong Kong uh, to show like Hong Kong has been known as the city that never snip, but she's showing at the image that Hong Kong actually in sleep. And I think this is very interesting. So Theodora, would you mind talking about how you have conceived the idea of putting a science fiction setup to your artwork and how how this project has developed like after you went back to France? Yeah. Um, so the, the um... I, I first of all, for, at first, I had um, I had a very documentary approach with the architecture, the electricity history, the the, the infrastructure. Um, but while I was experiencing Hong Kong, I suddenly had a, like a strong science fiction feeling, uh, and it started growing, growing, and maybe the the pandemic situation helped. Um, so I thought that uh, about through the, this. Uh, the, yeah, with, with this documentary uh, tone, uh, I, it was not enough and I, I wanted it to change into something more artistic and maybe more science fictional. Um, so I had this, I, I remember I was walking in a Victoria Park um, at, the, at nightfall and I suddenly the, the idea of uh, filming Hong Kong during the day, but for a day for night. Um, would be maybe a very uh, accurate uh, idea because it's, um, I, I show you a picture from, again, from stills. Just a second. Uh, yeah, so this is a day for a night um, with the Hong Kong coast. Um, uh, so yeah, um, 
so I, uh, I don't remember exactly when it popped up, but it just uh, popped her. And for me, it, it gave you like three interesting um, things. Firstly, it was a great for reference uh, for me, given the fact that uh, Day for Night is um, used in many, many uh, sci-fi movies that I love and that are huge reference for me. Um, but also, um, it will allow me to, to deal with the electric topic uh, in a way that I consider as very accurate uh, for me, uh, like showing its sudden disappearance and with the fact that uh, the subject is the disappearance, I thought it would be very interesting. But most of all, uh, with the day uh, for night, I could show Hong Kong like nobody would ever see it in completely into darkness without like a single sign. And I show you some more, um, yeah, some more. So to shoot this, I was, uh, yeah, filming at, at dusk between like 6.30 and 7. Sunday was the best thing to do so. Uh, yeah. And so you have uh, some overview. Um, and um, about the, 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 the story and the articulation between the, the documentary and the, the sci fi um, end. Um, the, the, the story became clearer and clearer and was nourished uh, with my own experiences and uh, my researches. For example, I read um, that the first underground electric cables uh, had been literally eaten by white ants and had to be replaced. And also, I myself been eaten by many insects uh, during my residency, especially in Lama Island. This was kind of an experience. Um, so I thought about merge between electricity and insects in Lama and a sudden power cut in Hong Kong in order to avoid contamination. This is how I articulate uh, the documentary and the science fiction uh, part. And when I came back to France uh, for the purpose uh, to do, I came back to France to, for the post-production and I continued to refine and improve the, the story with the editing uh, and what the editing was uh, creating. And I also gave a peculiar attention uh, to the sound because I, I, I wanted it to, to be the only element that gave a presence to, to, to this uh, ant's electricity uh, entity. And also the color grading of course was very important because it was the, um, doing the, the creating the, the, the day for night. So I would say that, yeah, I create, I was, I worked on the film like in the very, <laughs> at the very first start when I arrived and then until the, the end of the post-production, it, it always like evolved um, during this process. Yes, and um, like at, during the premiere, like two days ago, actually uh, the work was shown in a projection at St. Ken Plaza at K11 Museum. And the sound is very beautiful because it is like a circle theater. I, I don't have the word in my head, right? Like outdoor circle theater that you can have the surround sound around you. So this is a very beautiful experience to not only visually see, see it, but also like, all like from all the outside from my years, I experienced the story that Theodore is telling in of power. So although it is a very, it is absolutely pity that because of COVID, Theodore cannot be in Hong Kong right now during the screening, but uh, we were lucky enough to have the chance to organize uh, open studio for her with uh, the consulate and us, the K11 Foundation, uh, in April, just a few days before she left at V54, where she she stayed during the two months of residency. Um, we have the open studio. I can show you some photo of it. Um, so this is Fedora. Uh, this is actually after our setup at the open studio and. Uh, there, there are three parts in the open studio. Uh, we have the maps that pinpoint all the sites she has visited and with the small polar photos that she has taken in her visits. So as you can see, she has really visited a lot of places in Hong Kong, um, not only in Hong Kong Island, but 
different plots to understand the development of Hong Kong and development of Hong Kong electricity infrastructure. Um, we also show some books that she read or inspired her for this work. Uh, and there are like science fictions and some like sociology books about Hong Kong that Theodora can talk about like in, in our conversation. And it also shows some clips she has taken in Hong Kong and a film, a science fiction film in Hong Kong like made during the 90s uh, in their in their open studio. So uh, Theodora, would you, mind, would you want to talk more about the open studio and have you received like some interesting feedback during the open studio? Maybe, maybe I also can, um, you know, do a little, little introduction of the open studio because in the very first beginning, um, I was suggesting maybe we can engage the local art community to, um, to do the research with Theodora um, you know, in, in Lentau Island, Mama Island, or so, you know, and also Lentau Island as well. But um, later we found, you know, it's kind of quite difficult to find all these artists to go to, to, go to um, all this island with field of rain very early in the morning. So in the end, we, we suggest to have um, open studio instead because we found um, V54, you know, where field of is staying. It's quite beautiful. It's a heritage building. It's, um, you know, people would love to visit, visit the studio as well. And um, um, especially I'm an art, artist as well. I know the, um, the, the research process is far more important than the outcome of, 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 the, of the work itself. So, so I was suggesting maybe, maybe um, Fyodor can, can actually show the, the research process. So in the end, I was very surprised because um, when I see the map, you know, all these books and, and all these television showing, showing them the videos, um, she is actually interested, is kind of amazing and, and explain, um, you know, where all this inspiration is from. So, so thank you. Thank you for showing us and doing this op um, open studio event. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, actually it was great. For me, it was just uh, maybe a moment, a moment of pause when I could like just see what all I had, what I had done. And uh, to also, it was kind of a way to show um, the the structure of my reflection that I think it it looks like a, a web or a grid and everything is connected even if quite different. So we had few books, for example, the um, Akbar Abbas uh, Hong Kong that I read um, during the my quarantine because uh, I wanted to have a, like a political social sociological uh, background uh, before uh, arriving. There were also some Philip K. Dick uh, books. Um, because I, I really like them. <laughs> uh, yeah, also The Wicked City, um, a sci-fi film from the 80s that I really enjoyed. Um, and actually, during my residency, I, I had a sudden um, obsession for like tech noir uh, films. And at the same time, uh, Antonioni um, <laughs> filmography. So it was kind of a very strange mix. Um, and yeah, I wanted to 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 make like a very large overview of everything that had uh, nourished me, and um, I and also speaking with people uh, of the of the process and of the story I was uh, creating and everything it helped me a lot. Uh, I had some few night very nice interaction like a, a person that was uh, working about the li wildlife in Lama Island. And I have to say, Aiden, that you gave me also a very, very um, interesting uh, feedback when you told me about Akira. And I watched it the, the very next day and I was completely amazed. And actually the, um, the last shot in the film, uh, I can share again, uh, is completely um, uh, like influenced by Akira, like <laughs> this shot. Um, cause, uh, at the, the very beginning when they are like uh, the first ride in the city, I was amazed with the, the perspective and how it was shown with the first, uh, the building that was like slightly moving. And when I was in the editing for me, this shot, I called it Akira and I absolutely wanted to, to have it. So thanks again for sharing this reference. No worries. <laughs> 
But I, I also want to want to add a little bit, you know, of my you know of my childhood memories um, of Landmark Island because my grandpa is a fisherman. So so he actually was living around on Landmark Island, and Landmark Island was actually the heart of um, fishing fishing village. So back in the days before the financial center of Hong Kong, you know, did start developing. Um, Hong Kong South, you know, the Lemma Island, Aberdeen is actually, um, you know, uh, where all these fishermen would stay. So after after the fisher fishermen retired and then they they moving into the city, the Lemma Island just got abandoned. So I like the story, you know, um, when you're telling us, um, you know, where the the, the power plants moving from North Point to Lemma Island because there's a time when people start abandoning um, the south part of Hong Kong Island, especially Lemma mm -mm. Island. Okay, oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> mm, thank you. So we are about to, uh, to, I mean, we still have about 10 minutes for this talk. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask uh, on the Q&A. Um, otherwise, I mean, Teodora, um, I just, uh, maybe I had uh, one question for you because, um, I mean, you went through this residency. That's quite an experience that you made yeah, with, uh, with the quarantine and, uh, and this, um, I mean, this was the first time for you in this city. And I wanted to know how far it, um, it had an impact on your work uh, in general. Can you hear me? The, the image is frozen and I think we've lost <laughs> Theodora. The impact was too strong, the, the Hong Kong okay. impact. <laughs> um, yeah, I think actually, ah oh yes, here you are. Yeah. I can you, but you Sorry. On this cut. Yes, yes. Sorry, suddenly it stops. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Did you hear my question, Theodora? Uh, no, I was not here. <laughs> All right, so I will do it again. Sorry. So you had this um, quite amazing experience of the, uh, this residency in Hong Kong, and I wanted to know uh, generally um, um, if it had an impact on your um, on your work. And also, I wanted, I mean, also a more general question on the pandemic, and I wanted to know how you went through that in France, in Paris, because it's interesting also for um, our uh, Asian guests to know how it is for a young artist being in Paris uh, going through that period. Um, yeah, um, so um, for me, the project in Hong Kong is very connected uh, with my research, PhD research, uh, with, that deals with um, the um, nuclear footprint in southwest um, uh, of uh, the US, in the US, in the, in the uh, southwest area, which is uh, quite a, a desert. And I, I'm kind of obsessed with the electricity power issue and how they're like the entity or incarnation of uh, of fuel of our modern um, society and uh, how they built um, um, modern the modernity um, uh, ideology um, and it was very interesting for me because it was my first time in Asia actually and I I like the idea of uh, to have like places of research like I've been uh, researching in Europe a lot in the US and then it opened a new field of research in in Asia um, and electricity was the the, the, the door to enter <laughs> uh, this research but um, I discovered there are some uh, yeah very interesting things that, that, that are still a bit dormant in me because I've been working on this project and I'm kind of tired now <laughs> uh, and I just finished it so I'm still uh, the head I still have the the head uh, in it but I think that in the following months, it's gonna, I'm gonna have some, it's gonna come back. And I think I'm gonna, yeah, continue working on this uh, uh, area because I find it very, very interesting. It's very different from for what I know. But um, Hong Kong was very interesting because it's um, the perfect uh, way to enter uh, this uh, area because it's still very influenced by um, the, the the British uh, colony, you really feel it. And uh, uh, yeah, it was a, a great um, 
in between uh, <laughs> for me and so maybe the, the best place to begin with. Uh, so I think, yeah, I, it's gonna, um, some other projects are going to grow. And for now, uh, like in France, the situation, wait, I, I, I have to say that it was very nice to be able to go to restaurants and uh, have a normal life for, <laughs> for a few months. <laughs> um, yeah, like, but it's, not in sorry Kong. in hong kong yeah yeah no i mean in hong kong yeah in hong kong, yeah to to have a like a yeah. life like i used to have <laughs> but yeah it's it's i think it's getting better uh here but um we never know and um i'm not very confident but maybe i'm uh, i'm not very optimistic i don't know I, did i answer all your question Yes, and I wanted to know what are your upcoming projects, if you are showing the film also in France, if you have, uh, yeah, so what are the, the next projects? Um, the following project, um, I, uh, so I have my, my PhD research uh, about, so the imprint of uh, nuclear research in the Four Corners area, and it deal with the, like, the, the desert as the ultimate proving ground for um, military, industrial uh, scientists, and also artists. Like there is a lot of land art um, piece of work there. Um, I also have a new project. Uh, um, I will, um, but I it's not um, it's not yet official, so I can't really say it. But I gonna be in Rome for a year and work on uh, construction and. Um, uh, the interaction between the construction and, and land and uh, how to create um, um, a, a documentary sculpture. Uh, this is another uh, topic of my uh, of my PhD, like how to create a sculpture that uh, you can give like a feeling of documentary, but without being like um, a con reconstitution of um, historical fact and how to, to yeah, create a uh, sculpture that could be uh, documentary. And I will work on the nuclear, um, uh, um, the nuclear um, um, power station uh, in, uh, in, in Italy, because they are very interesting, because Italy decided to quit nuclear uh, just after Chernobyl. So they are all closed and um, being de deconstructed. And also I will work about the F Federico Fellini um, um, films because there is always some uh, sculpture and, uh, and and in the background of the film, there is some constr weird construction that I consider as structure. So, it's, so it will be a mix uh, between all this. Sorry, it's not, maybe not very clear the way I speak. Right, no, no, it's fine. Right, if there are more questions, so feel free to ask uh, on the chat. So we had uh, just a message from uh, Natasha Ginvala. Uh, saying thank you all for sharing the residency experience. Huh? So that was interesting actually, actually to, to have your, your feedbacks on this residency. Um, yeah, so I mean, we have, I mean, we still have a few minutes. Um, I mean, the, the next uh, talk will be starting uh, at, um, at 10 a.m. in Paris which is uh, 4 p.m. in Hong Kong. And so we will talk with uh, Kingsley NG, um, Hong Kong-based artist who studied like you, uh, Theodora, also in Le Frémont yeah. in North of France, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, so he will be um, talking with um, Rebecca lamarche Vaden, uh, director of Anticipation Lafayette uh, in Paris. And we will have also an introduction by Sylvie Boulanger, director of the CNAI Paris. So, yeah. So if you want to add more words, uh, Aiden or Angel, I let you, the last word. Yeah, I, th I think Kingsley is a perfect, perfect um, candidate for, for, for the exchange because I still remember 10 years ago when I first came back to Hong Kong, I was, I was, um, because I was working in a gallery, I was setting up Kingsley's work. So one of his work is like a projection of like a Hong Kong light scene, you know, pretty, pretty much same same as uh, Viodohar's uh, last scene, you know, with like a Hong Kong landscape. 
with with some lights um, on the background. So so it's a big contrast, but similar kind of um, ideas. So so maybe you can talk to Kinsey about your ideas. I think I think it'll be interesting. Um, so thank you, thank you for a few dollars um, coming to Hong Kong, and I really enjoy your stay. You know, and sharing with us all these all these um, ideas, ex experience. You know, going to Lantau, Lamar Island. Thank you. Thank you very much, Aidan. So Angel, maybe the last word. Yes. Um, thanks. First thing, uh, thank you, Theodora, for joining this project and coming to Hong Kong. It has been an amazing experience and a very beautiful artwork. Actually, there is a tiny thing I'd like to add because Theodora has made a lot of materials during her stay in Hong Kong that she didn't have the chance to put in the final film. For example, she has taken a lot of like 60 millimeter films and in Hong Kong. And actually I'm really looking forward to see the project uh, of, of power will further develop and and I, I'm really looking forward to it like in it is presented maybe in different forms and perhaps in a further development with her research. Yeah. Can I add a word? Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, thank you both and uh, thank you. It was an amazing experience and um, it I think it's gonna really change um, my mind and way to work. I don't know. It's very um, new, but uh, I'm sure it's going to be great. And yeah, the 60 millimeters, I'm I'm working on it. And I think maybe maybe I did two projects during the residency. Um, but uh, I will let you know how how we, it's going to go. But yeah, I think about maybe more installation, like video installation with the 60 millimeters, and um, and also picture. I took a lot of picture, so I think it's going to be a lot of sub projects um, that are going to come back. Thank you so much, Theodora. So thank you for this conversation. Thank you, Angel. Thank you, Aidan. So this conversation will be, um, I mean, he's uh, it's been recorded, will be broadcasted and will be available on the website of the Institut Francais uh, for uh, replay, so in one week. So thank you so much to all of you and uh, see you at uh, 10 a.m., uh, so in 15 minutes for the other talk. Uh, 10 a.m. Paris and uh, 4 p.m. Hong Kong time. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Have a nice day. Bye.